Well, good Wednesday to each and every one of you. Hi, John Sanders. We've had a heck of a last couple of weeks here in the Tulsa area. And the reason I say that is just simply because for those residents in this area, we had well over 150,000 homes that were without power and some upwards of in excess of 10 days from our uh, winds that came across here about a week, uh, two weeks ago, and it was just absolutely crazy. Uh, we never lost power here at the office of Apex Insurance Group, but what did happen was internet services are uh, were knocked out, and we're still having uh, technical difficulties with our internet, so that's why we're recording this today and we will put it up on YouTube and let you watch our webcast that way. I apologize for the inconvenience, but uh, as the mayor of Tulsa actually said, it became uh, really amazing to understand how important it is or what you're giving up when you can't even make a cell phone call from downtown Tulsa. And uh, despite everything that we may have seen in the past in movies and what y'all think of Oklahoma, we do have indoor plumbing and we also have running water in most homes. And yes, there are cell phone towers uh, and they do regularly go into downtown Tulsa. So we definitely had a storm of the century. And uh, but uh, within a couple of weeks, I'm sure we will be back in business fully. So without any further ado, getting here early, typically when we are live, we'll allow you to partake in the basic agents, some commercials, some fun stuff, uh, our new cat recruiting vid our cat videos that are for agent recruiting purposes. Dan, our digital marketing officer, uh, basically uh, has uh, said yes, the, he gave those the thumbs up and they're running. So just getting here early allows you to take care of some of the administrative things. You know, every single year we want to move forward as we edge towards success. And whatever your idea of success is as an agent is going to be different than our idea of success here at Apex Insurance Group but we do need to edge towards this regardless of wherever that is and whatever that is. But the things that we need to do is, in, if we're to be successful, is not be uh, unwilling to try new things. We need to understand that. And if we blow it, and some days that we definitely do, well, there's always tomorrow, and you can always get a fresh start tomorrow. And the goal overall at uh, January or December 31st of any given year is to ask yourself, are you better uh, this year than you were last year or uh, what have you? But the goal overall is to be better each and every year. And I say that again, the goal is to be better each and every year. Also, if you're not planning on growing, if you're comfortable with where you are business-wise, then uh, give us a call because our the overall concept is growing. And um, I had that ex this explained to me today. Um, imagine you're a fisherman, and as the river is um, flowing by you, if you're not part uh, and moving as fast as the river is, uh, that river is opportunity. And opportunity is just going downstream. You can be content with where you are, but what ends up happening is you may very well miss out on an opportunity saying, hey, look, I am not willing to grow. Also, consistency. If you do not have consistent business in the books and working towards consistency, then you are missing the boat. I can promise you that. Uh, I've said it before, say it again, it is so much uh, better for us as an agency and even more so for you to submit one piece of business every single month for 12 months 
than to submit 12 pieces of business at January of every year and then not be seen or heard from until the next year. So consistency is so very important. And let's kind of talk right here. Oh, let's change this. Uh, let's talk about closing the generation gap. As we age more and more different kinds of generation, uh, generations are coming on board. You had used to have the baby boomers, then the Gen Xers, now we're into the Gen Zs. And, you know, the older we get, the harder it is to keep up with folks. But I can promise you each and every one of those groups of people or those people groups, let me, uh, gosh, this microphone gets in my way. But each of these people groups, they each have a different communication style. They each have a different needs and wants, ultimately a little nuanced differences. But, uh, you know, I don't speak the same way uh, that uh, uh, younger kids speak. And um, I, I forget what I have. Oh, in my crazy Hawaiian shirts that I often wear, somebody said that was really dope. Now, for a kid, uh, when I was in high school, dope means just that, dope. And uh, nowadays, I guess it means really cool. So... Anyway, for what that's all worth, if we're not communicating in the style of the customer, then we're missing out. So we're going to be talking about that. So let's take a look right here. To be an effective insurance agent, we need to understand how to sell to the different age groups and to speak their love language. And uh, speaking to the love language means that you have to speak to the language in which that they best understand. So we're going to give you some tips and hacks. As a matter of fact, you take a look at the young lady that's in this picture right here, and she's got holes in her pants. Now, that's the way I look at it. She has got a hole in her pants, and, that, and her dress is totally acceptable. Her manner of dress that she is is totally acceptable for her age group, yet I'm a guy who uh, the woman to the right, uh, that is what I found to be acceptable in the corporate world. So as time progresses, different things occur and different things happen, and we need to fully understand that. One thing we need to understand is we need to tailor our approach to the different ages that, occur, uh, that we're uh, dealing with. Now, obviously, we're not going to be uh, talking to a 30-year-old for a final expense coverage, but we do need to be able to target who we're talking to and speak to them in their language that they understand. And they speak and they act different ways. One age group may appreciate telephone calls and face-to-face -face meetings. The other group even if you're in the same room and you're at the same table, they may want you to text them. And I've had that happen, and I looked at them, and uh, on so many occasions I'm told that uh, I'm not necessarily a friendly salesperson because I don't always put into practice what I preach, especially if I'm talking to my kids and my kid turns around and says, hey, would you text me that? I says, Text it yourself, and I'd give them a phone and let them text the message to them themselves if they want to text. So I, I say that analogy or that little bit of humor just because uh, I'm kind of the older I get, I'm one of those old farts. So there, I said it. Understand the generational needs, and there are different needs for each particular generation. So as you get older... Uh, folks in my age group would be more interested in retirement planning because their event horizon is right around the corner. So the needs that they'll have will be so much more different than a person who is a Gen Z person. They're more interested, or a millennial uh, would be a whole lot different. They're not planning on retiring for years, so talking to them about retirement, although it is very important, is not necessarily the selling issue. They may be concerned about life insurance because they have an up and growing family, but an IUL may be the sale there. Also, the need to educate and also simplify 
will be very important as you're talking to different age groups because we all know that insurance is a very complex thing. There's a lot of different technical terms that are out there with different types of insurance. Uh, talking about uh, underwriting and looking back and and having to explain to someone that if you've had a DUI, you may be declined for insurance, or even if you are practicing a daredevil of sorts, whether you're a rock climber, a parachutist, uh, each of those things, they, a person may go, well, why would I get declined for that specific thing? Well, we do need to educate and we do need to help. And this is uh, very important because we can use graphs, we can use charts, we can just throw up pictures, and we can do those things to explain it. Also, building trust. Building trust, it doesn't really matter um, what age group you're dealing with. Uh, it, there was something that in the 70s, you couldn't trust someone over 30 because they would sell you out. And I'm not sure, you know, I don't think I've got too many 70-year-olds that are out there in the field, but I might be surprised. But the fact of the matter is that different generations uh, still need to be built on trust because your 30-year-old today, if you're still working in this business 10 years from now, is going to be a 40-year-old. And those needs at that time are going to be different Trust me, they are going to be very, very different. And you need to lever leverage the technology that is out there because technology, regardless of the state, uh, you know, television has been around for a great deal of time and people are accustomed to looking at computer screens. They may not necessarily be willing to work on a computer. They may not be open to having digital signatures, but they are at least familiar with looking at with on-screen presentations. And especially since COVID, even those that are baby boomers are a lot more comfortable working with technology because they were left without family interaction through the social media stuff, or pardon me, through um, the COVID stuff. And, uh, and they've learned a little bit of how to navigate the technology arena, but the younger kids, uh, which I call younger kids, the Gen Zs, the millennials and stuff, the, the younger folks, they are so much better at technology and they are not afraid to embrace it. You also have to show value regardless of the age and regardless of the usage. No one is going to go out and invest in a purchase of an item without showing some sort of value. Those individuals who are at the point in their career who are building uh, their nest egg or are building their mountain of cash at 30 year old, uh, 30 or even 20 year old, years old are not willing to uh, sideline, even if they do have a goal for making a silly purchase. They, a, each purchase needs to have some sort of value attached to it. This way, uh, if you can show the value, then the likelihood of an individual uh, purchasing uh, a product from you are going to be so much greater and enhanced. Without a doubt, if you're not a listening agent, your job is going to be very, very, very difficult because you have to listen in order to be able to adapt and provide the kind of both answers to the questions and then also being able to overcome the objections that an individual may have with regard to the products that you're selling. So you do have to be patient and when you talk to your customers or your prospects and allow them the opportunity to answer and, and receive an answer to every question. And you can only get that through proper listening and you will have to adapt to that. Also, we need to provide excellent customer service. Regardless of an age group, everybody wants to feel valued. And it doesn't matter if an individual is buying a $5 million life insurance deal or a $75,000 a year IUL 
or they are rolling over a million dollars into a fixed uh, a, a fixed annuity or even an indexed annuity. The fact of the matter is everybody wants to have excellent customer service. You and I both, we have one opportunity in our life. Let me say this again. We have one opportunity in our life to show that we are a professional and that our word is our bond. And if we're not willing to invest in our own bond, then that brings up legitimate questions that an individual may have about your professionalism. So the single greatest thing that I can think that we have as agents is our ability to provide that excellent customer service. Also, you can offer some sort of customization. Let's say an individual wants protection as well as retirement. Maybe you, and has a limited amount of financial uh, capability. Maybe you can provide and package something with life insurance, maybe a little bit of an IUL, and then maybe a little bit of a uh, indexed annuity. And if they don't have any kind of short-term disability, maybe you can look at that as well. So that is, to some degree, providing those customized packages. Don't shy away from that. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. You're going to be surprised that if you're not willing to maybe be a little bit flexible in your approach, or maybe even like in a policy starting low and over a period of time as income increases, those things will help you immensely in your field. Here's something that I've been talking to on a regular and recurring basis with uh, prospective agents of Apex Insurance Group, and that is about social proofing your business. And what is that? Well, in short, that is ensuring that you use those influencing tools to help make purchasing decisions. You know, it is so important that sometimes, I'm, I'm back in the old days where if you took a three ring binder and you took, uh, uh, you took uh, what, what past customers would write and then you would hand those things to your, your prospects and say, look, these are things that my prior customers have said. And nowadays, you could have testimonials on, on the website. You could have your own testimonials on your own website. You can also do social media and, and garner support that way. Uh, also, you could uh, do white papers. And with the use, uh, engage Apex Insurance Group and let us do some of that heavy lifting about creating maybe a white paper as to why insurance today is so much more important than it was in years past. Those are the things that will separate you and offer true wealth or true value to the prospect that you're dealing with that will differentiate you from the agent down the street. And that's all that it's about, is looking at how to differentiate between you and the agent down the street. Stay updated with industry trends. Uh, attending web classes like this, our webcasts or various carrier webcasts are so very important because you need to get that trustworthy insurance information. And if you're just getting it from anyone, you know, you've got to, it's like you're feeding. You don't want to go to the greasy spoon down the street when you don't know what it offers as opposed to go to a trusted place. So you want to stay updated with those trends from the people that you know. So even so, you can share it with the prospect next time that you see it. Kind of like, hey, did you know? And um, in the month of May, that was National Short-Term Disability Month. That was an opportunity to educate people in short-term disability, and they gave it a whole month. So that's an important thing. Offer education-based selling. You know, education-based selling uh, is, is a really good approach. You know, you, you get like a lesson as to why insurance would be important or why uh, retirement planning would be important. And maybe it's a master class, uh, uh, life insurance purchasing made simple. Maybe it's a webcast. 
uh, something like we're doing right here because we're trying to help you as an agent better your selling across multiple generational lines. Well, what's the deal with helping your prospects make a better buying decision because they are your prospects and the differentiator between you and the competitor down the street is maybe doing a little bit of educational uh, based selling. Also be authentic and relatable. I think we can all see plastic, okay? Uh, if, if you're not you, people can see that. I think everybody has their own BS meter and a BS meter does not lie to an individual. Now some people may get hooked, winked, uh, but the old saying is fool me once, shame on me, uh, or shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So being authentic allows you to be uh, true to the person and it helps you to be relatable. Now we're not saying make yourself uh, who, who you are not, we're just saying that be true to yourself within that scope and that is very important. Also stay professional. I've seen some agents who before I got into this industry Boy, oh, I tell you what, they were like sailors. They had mouths that, uh, you know, I would have to tell, my, uh, tell them that my wife was in the room and I'd appreciate them cleaning things up. I also ran into another agent while I was an agent and uh, we were discussing opportunities at a particular location and he was informing me that I needed to stay out of his market. Meanwhile, he had a giant pizza stain on his shirt when he was uh, discussing this. And it, to me, it just did not show anything about professionalism. And yes, you do need to be professional. And speaking of professional, if you're not an adopter of any kind of digital marketing, then you are behind the curve. You are seriously behind the times. It is not difficult at all to spin up some sort of website some sort of Facebook page, some sort of social media, and develop content for that. These are things that you get as a producing agent, as a producing agent through Apex Insurance Group. We can provide a landing page for you that gives you that digital credibility for future uh, prospects that you have. You can have a branded email. And if you're not embracing digital marketing, that's like the person that says, I refuse to buy a car because I only buy carbureted automobiles. You know, that's, uh, that's ludicrous. You have, to, you have to change with the times or get out. Also, some folks, this is something that uh, took me a while to learn, but uh, build relationships by networking. Sometimes you may find a PNC agent that does not do life insurance and you're able to refer PNC cl uh, potential clients to them in return for them returning life and annuity business to you. And having those kind of networking capabilities, we can all benefit. You can benefit immensely if you properly, uh, properly network. That's very important. And also offer those value-added services, whether it's a, uh, maybe a monthly newsletter. Maybe it's reaching out every six months and saying, hey, how's it going? Or even a value-added service such as maybe even uh, saying, hey, happy birthday. Now, uh, I had a marketing uh, person tell me, offer a half birthday uh, uh, birthday card. That's at the six-month out level. And because that stands out more so than a birthday card. And uh, that kind of, you know, that value added uh, sets you apart. And that's all that it's about. You've got to make your, you know, there is a potential that some point in the future that your prospect is going to have you and another agent. And, and uh, you're, you're trying to do the things that will cause you to win uh, out the other agent. Remember, you, you know, if you're feeling bad that they have uh, food uh, uh, you know, to feed their kids and things like that as an agent, and you're willing to lose business to some other agent, then you need to, soon you will be the hungry agent because being kind like that, let them up their skills 
let them attend some webinars, let them learn how to adopt social media, let them do those changes that will make them a better agent as opposed to dumbing down your sales capability. So offering those value added services will only be a money shot towards you. And also continuously improve your skills and knowledge. As time goes by on a weekly, monthly, and semi-annual basis here at Apex Insurance Group, I find ourselves at this agency moving ever so slowly and sometimes taking bigger steps into the AI realm. And the reason for that is that's where it's going. Okay, uh, you know, I could spend four hours doing online research on a particular topic, or I could just learn to ask an AI bot a question as to whether or not a system or a, a product or something like that would make sense or a demographic. So it's all about time. And if you're not continuously working to improve that skill set, even your sales skills, there's all kinds of ongoing training that you can do that will help you on a regular and recur a recurring basis. And uh, flexibility, oh my gosh. I remember in the days in the military, I would, uh, we would call uh, as a class uh, when we were in school, military school, we would adopt the, the terminology of Semper Gumby and um, always flexible. Um, for those of you that remember Gumby as a uh, little toy, um, uh, that's a, you, it was just flexibility. If you are not prepared to have a customer say, hey, I'm running 30 minutes late, or I had a kid go to the hospital, we'll have to reset. And people's lives today are terribly complex and terribly full, kind of threading you know, threading your meeting, which may be a very high priority for you, indeed, in and of itself, is not that high priority for your customer uh, when it comes to maybe something else. And you have to be able to adapt to that and be flexible enough to uh, change. Don't forget to get those customer uh, testimonials. Because as you build out your testimonial book at the end of the sale, that's going to feed what's going to be the thing that's going to get your next several eight, uh, you know, clients down the road. The more testimonials that you get, the more adaptability that you will have for somebody reaching out to you. Because if you get a testimonial from a hairdresser, another hairdresser that might be reading those testimonials may reach out and grab you simply because that you got yourself a testimonial. So very important. So simply by doing those tips, and even though they're not necessarily above, uh, th those tips in and of itself will help you become a much better producer. It will help you to become more financially successful. It will allow you, if not necessarily, to earn more income through sales. It will allow you to earn the same level of income without as much work. So those things become very, very important. Apex Insurance Group offers several different YouTube channels which are geared and available to help you build your business better, bigger, and stronger. And you can watch even this webcast. And as a matter of fact, as of today, you are watching this one online since we're not doing it live. We also have what's called the uh, Basic Agent Channel, which is a tool designed to help agents build their business by using some of the tips and the tools that they learned new as an agent but as time went on, they got smarter in the things that they did and did not and, and got away from the basic items. So the basic agent is there to help you be better. You, we offer several methods of contacting us here at Apex Insurance Group. If you want to know more, you can call us, you can email, or as a matter of fact, you can complete the form. Hmm. Look at all those different ways, and that's pretty amazing, folks. You can also attend our webcast in two weeks. It's called Uncovering the Secrets. You can read it to yourself, but I'll tell you what. If you're not personally out uh, prospecting on your own, if you think that just buying leads are going to do it for you, 
then you're sadly mistaken. I can promise you that in today's uh, interesting world, you would always want to have multiple methods of lead generation. And let's not forget our own ability to prospect. I, and ladies and gentlemen, I thank you so very much for attending today's webcast. Don't forget to give us a call.